Hello and welcome to the second video in our series on the CPU simulator software. In the first video we configured the CPU simulator to drive a snake around a maze or at least partially around a maze. I left it to you to get it all the way around the maze. What we're going to do this time is we're going to use the same CPU simulator software to control a set of traffic lights and we're going to try to simulate the sequence of the UK, the United Kingdom traffic light sequence which I think I've got right. I'll probably turn around somebody will say ah, it's not quite the exact traffic light sequence there's a slightly longer delay or a slightly different light sequence but I'm 99% certain we've got this one right okay so what we need to do um, first of all we've downloaded the CPU simulator software and um, we've unzipped it and we've got this folder uh, the simulator itself is at the top there SMS 32 V50 if we go a little bit further inside we can see a lot of uh, demo files which have the extension ASM on the end. Um, we've also got some help files which are useful. Uh, this one here, 12002T light, talks about the traffic lights. Because we actually have a traffic light output on the CPU simulator, it's output 01. So if we output the value in a register to the output 01, it will actually go to the traffic lights. And the very useful thing we've got here is we've got a little table which tells us how to generate the correct light sequence on the traffic lights. You can see that we've got the most significant bit on the left hand side, we've got the least significant bit on the right hand side and it's just an 8-bit number. So we've got 8 bits or 2 nibbles. Um, 8 bits can be represented as 2 nibbles or 2 4-bit blocks which of course is 2 hexadecimal characters. So in this particular case we've got all of the lights on so we've got um, the 128-bit set, the 64-bit set, the 32-bit set, the 16-bit set the 8-bit set and the 4-bit set. The only bits that are not set are the 2 and the 1. So that gives us, let's see, that's 128 plus 64 is 192, plus 32 is 224, plus 16 is 240, plus 8 is 248, so that would be 252. So we've got the binary, we've got the um, binary could be converted to 252 in decimal, but that of course is not 252 in hex. In fact, what we would do is we would convert the first four bits, so that's 1, 1, 1, 1, into 15, because we've got the 8-bit, the 4-bit, the 2-bit, and the 1-bit. So that would give us a value of 15, which in hex is F. And then we would have the remaining uh, bits, which is a, the 8-bit and the 4-bit of the second hex character. 8 and 4 is 12. Um, 10 is A, 11 is B, 12 is C, so that would be FC. Okay, um, just to give you a bit more of an idea how that works, what I've done is I've used this table, but I've expanded upon it slightly. If I bring that one up, you'll notice, and this took a little while to design, but we've got the correct traffic light sequence, I believe, for the United Kingdom here. North, south flow, east, west flow, red, green, so we're flowing on the east, west direction. And we've got green to amber. So it's basically telling the east-west flow to slow down because the lights are about to go red. Um, we've got red amber red which has stopped the east-west flow and it's preparing the north-south flow to go. Then we've got uh, green red and it works the other way around stage 5 amber red and then finally stage 6 red red amber. And then it would cycle all the way back around to stage 1 again. So we're pretty certain, we're pretty confident that this is the correct UK traffic light sequence. Um, stages 1 and stages 4 are the only stages where you would actually have serious traffic flow through the lights. The lights should have traffic flow going through them on any of the other stages. Okay, so how do we generate the light sequence? I'm hoping you can see by the table here what I've done is I've got the 8-bit numbers broken down into four nibbles, uh, sorry, two nibbles or four bits, which gives us two hexadecimal characters. Um, you can see that we've got red, amber, green, red, amber, green, and then the last two, the two least most significant bits, are unused. They remain unused on all of the um, light colours, but you should be able to see that if we want a red on the north-south flow, we just need to flick the red bit to one on the left-hand most hexadecimal character, and the green bit to one on the right-hand most hexadecimal character. And equally, if we want a red and an amber, it's just the red bit to one, on the left hand side and the amber bit to one on the right hand side and it's fairly obvious to work out from there. Um, to convert into hexadecimal use 
each of the four bit blocks separately so on the left hand side the top line we've got one under the eight which gives us the first hex character of eight and we've got one under the four which gives the second hex character of four uh, likewise the next line down we've got eight and eight it gets a bit more complicated on the next line down which gives us a red amber and a red for stage three because we've now got eight and four which is twelve but obviously you can't say twelve in hexadecimal um, ten is a eleven is b and twelve sorry ten is a eleven is b twelve is c ah it's thirteen right we've got eight the four and the one okay so we've got eight four and one which is thirteen which comes out at d okay need to read my own table properly there um, next one along we've got the two and the one bit which gives us three and then a zero so three zero and I'm hoping you can follow exactly how that works okay so now we know how we generate the correct light sequence by using the correct bits in binary and then converting those to the hex values to put in the CPU simulator we can program the CPU simulator superb so I'm now going to bring the CPU simulator up and we'll start programming okay so the very first thing we need to do is just type start to start the line of code and then we'll use a semicolon which is a comment and we will say red um, I'll just use the pipes and green to start off with uh, red and green require let's just use the tab to make it look a bit prettier that we move into the AL general purpose register the value that will give us a red and a green light so move into the AL register comma and what value is that if we look back we can see that it's a value of 84 it gives us a red and a green light so 84 okay. now that won't give us a red and green light until we output that to the traffic lights output we do that by typing out for the output command and the traffic lights are on 0, 01 or on the 0, 01 output so that should do the job now what we'll do is we'll just speed things up a little bit I'll just copy that and paste it in a few times whoops pardon me right how many stages have we got we've got six stages so we'll do that six times that looks good and then we'll convert them for the other colors so we want red amber that's the second one amber and then we need to move into the traffic light sequence the value of 88 to give us a red and an amber because it's the 8 bit on both hexadecimal characters okay so if we change that from 84 to 88 that will give us a red and an amber and then output that to 0 1 so as it outputs to the traffic lights um, the next one is actually slightly unusual because that's red and amber at the same time with um, a red on the other side to stop the traffic on the east to west flow okay and to do that we need to have D0 cool um, that will then go next to green followed by when that's on green the other side must be on red otherwise it's going to be a really serious collision um, green red is as you can see the green on and the red on will be uh, the two character the one character which gives us three in the first hexadecimal digit and zero in the second one so that's three zero so we want three zero in there output that to the output for the traffic lights uh, next we wish to have amber Amber followed by red and amber and red would be five zero. So I don't really need to flick backwards and forwards so I can see what's written on there. And then finally we want to have a red amber on the right hand side. Um, followed by uh, let's have a look. Ah, red and red amber. Superb, which would be nine eight in hexadecimal. And 9.8 would give us what? We give us the red, that's the 8, and a red and an amber, which gives us a 8 plus 1 is 9, 
followed by 8 in the second character. So we've got a 9, 8 for stage 6. And then it will just repeat around. In fact, we need to make sure that we get it to repeat around now. So the next thing to do would be to uh, use jump. Jump command to jump back to the start. That's looking reasonable. And don't forget to finish your program with end, otherwise you'll have problems when you run it. So let's just run through this in our heads. We've got a start, we've got red, green, move to the AL register 84, which is the binary code to give us red and green, um, represented in hexadecimal in the actual assembly language there. Output that to 0, 01, which outputs it to the traffic light controller. This looks good, red, amber, 88, output to 0, 01. Yep, that looks fine. So what we will do is we'll try stepping through that first of all. So if we now go to step, it will ask us to save it. I'll just stick it somewhere on the desktop. Just call it uh, test underscore lights. That'll do. Dot ASM. Okay, there's our RAM editor. We can see the various things that are going to happen. Move AL84, output to 1, then move AL88, output to 1, etc. for the first two stages there. If we start stepping through, there we go. Red and green, which was 84 in the AL register being outputted. Now we're going to move 88 into the register and then output 88 which should give us red and amber. There we go. And then we move D0 into the AL register and then output D0 which should give us red amber on the left and red on the right. Here we go, ready for the output. There we go. The change doesn't occur until we output the contents of the AL register to the correct output. Uh, then three zeros moved into the AL register, and then we output three zero, which should give us green red, and it does. And then we put five zero in, which should give us amber red, output five zero, and there is your correct traffic light sequence, and then it just works its way around. It starts all over again, and it should jump, and away we go. Right, so let's, uh, let's run that. There we go. There is your traffic light sequence working. Okay. Now obviously if your traffic light sequence worked that fast on the amber, um, well, <laughs> not so much on the amber, if it worked that quick on the red-green, when one side's red and the other side's green, we're going to have a big problem because nobody can accelerate that quick unless they've got an extremely fast car, like a nice Tesla. Um, so the other changes are okay, they're perhaps a little bit quick, um, but what we do need to do is we need to slow down on the red-green stages, stage one and stage four. So if we look at stage one and stage four, okay, let's just move that out of the way. Uh, stage one and stage four, let's move it out of the way a little bit further. Uh, we, we need a delay there, okay, and we need a delay on stage four as well. So uh, we would need to look at um, procedure calls or loops in order to put the delay in, but we've got the correct traffic light sequence working, so I hope that is useful to you. Um, and uh, check back in for the next video. Well, I'm not so sure I like programming as much as networking, but it's actually growing on me. Yeah, it's definitely growing on me. Okay, signing out from this video, check back for the next one. Cheerio.